It is uh, time to meet Rashida Yost, and uh, she's local, and she's also a candidate for governor and does a lot of handwritten notes as well, too. Rashida, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Thanks for having me. And I like pumpkin spice cake. <laughs> oh, well, of course you do. Of course you do. Yes. Uh, t- tell me the Rashida Yost story, right? So yes. uh, t- tell me, are you originally from Martinsburg? I was born in Prince William County in Virginia. Okay. I grew up in Singapore. Mm-hmm. And I moved back in 2013 and eventually met my husband. All my life, I have grown singing John Denver, West Virginia song. (laughs) I had no clue at that time. But after, you know, I met my husband uh, eight years ago, we got married, and I'm living in, uh, 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 not Martinsburg, Bunker Hill, and this is awesome, Berkeley County, and then it dawned on me, of course, this is where my home is, you know? Mm -hmm. And I love West Virginia, always have, always will. How did you wind up in Singapore? My mother is from Singapore. Mm -hmm. She's Chinese. uh, And I grew up, uh, you know, more Asian than American. But because I'm also one of the vocal Asian, because I am uh, part American, and I stood out, obviously, in school for talking a lot. (laughs) And I'm still talking a lot. (laughs) That's good for an interview, by the way. Yes. That's good. Keep that trait going. Thank you. Uh, and, and, And then, tell us uh, what you did for a living, what you do for a living. Yes, I have been in the education industry for almost 33 years, and all I ever know uh, is to teach young children, grow up with them, and I still behave like kids most of the time, and my campaign manager and even my husband said that, okay, you're in your 50s now, you know? So, because I'm always happy, and I always uh, feel very optimistic about things, Mm -hmm. that's what children always feel, and Loving the nature of my job, I decided to take it a step forward. Having been working in the uh, child care industry especially, of course, I met a lot of people, a lot of children. I travel uh, almost uh, half the globe in Asia and uh, taught and also did some phonics uh, uh, teaching to the child care teachers in uh, Asian country. Indonesia, Singapore, and Kuala Lumpur. I was in Vietnam in 2010, Mm -hmm. uh, being part of the business organization uh, with a few companies from Asia. That was phenomenal. And because I love to do things, I am a doer, I decided to put my skills, my knowledge, and my experience to do and give back to the community because God has blessed my life so much that I am going to share. I'm going to share the blessings, and this is what I'm doing. Now I'm running a daycare center. I have two. One is yet to open. Mm -hmm. The one is currently running in its fourth year, Yost Child Development Center, and we are always a team in there. I I address my staff as team member. I learn from other uh, business owners, and also my husband, he worked at FedEx. He retired last year, so he's managed. Manager used to call their chat group Team Elite. So I did the same. I said I named my chat group Team Elite, and that 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 was awesome, and everybody <laughs> loved it. I learned a lot from people and from experiences. Have you ever? You're running for governor. Yes, sir. Have you ever run for office before? No, I have not, and. I know it's a big jump. Reason I'm going to the top because I want things done. I was in one of the House of Delegates meeting a year ago, last year, and I know how frustrating it is to voice out to get things done and you have to wait. And sometimes, in fact, most of the time, you are left with a disappointment because things wouldn't get done. There are so many steps and so many organizations and letter to work with. So I get frustrated when something good that I can obviously do and make things better for the people, and I face roadblocks. Mm-hmm. So I want to make be able to do the make the decision, make sure that I can work with a team. I am a team player. I love working with team. I love ideas. I share it with them. I love motivating my team. Sometimes, and if not most of the time, they said, I, I, I always give them like YouTube videos from uh, Mark Zuckerberg, from uh, Jeff Bezos, from Robert Kiyosaki, a lot of all that. Uh, Brian Tracy's my favorite. Jim Rohn's my son's favorite. He's 11. So <laughs> we always listen and I share it with my team. So I am a team player. Mm-hmm. And to me, the governor job is not a job. 
it's actually a service, and you cannot look at it as a nine to five. And I am not a nine to five person, so I am. Twenty-five, eight person. <laughs> and you're running as a Republican. Yes, sir. Okay. And have you been a Republican all of your adult voting life? Yes, I do. Uh, in fact, when I was in Singapore, I haven't done a lot of voting. Uh, mm-hmm. But when I uh, flew back here, staying here for good, you know, I registered. And my family uh, is a Republican. My husband is. And it's not that I have to be one. You know, it's just a party. I'm running for everybody. And I love bringing people together. And I'm going to run a clean campaign because it's about time we unite people. We are West Virginian. All right. Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Uh, good morning. Yes, Congratulations sir, good morning. for running. Thank and, you. And I'm so glad to meet you. Thank you. Uh, you have to admit, though, realistically, you have a big, big mountain to climb. You're not well known. I don't know what the finances are, but most folks just running for the first time do not have the big sponsors that, uh, uh, that folks more embedded in politics frequently have. How do you... In- how do you hope to overcome this lack of name recognition, the lack of big sponsors, and the fact that you're the, the new person on the street? How do you how are you going to get your message out? That is an awesome question. I'm dying to answer. And my, I may not have my team may not have a big finance to back me up yet, but we have big hearts. And with big hearts, it is priceless. With whatever that I had, I saw all the um, uh, this finance disclosure uh, on the website for the Secretary of State. I saw how the funds uh, have been raised, you know, by each candidate, and it, you know, looks very substantial, and compared to mine. But that did not stop me from writing, handwriting, personally, 500 Christmas card to small business owner, to give out, you know, uh, cards and and make their Christmas merry, and also to introduce myself. And I also uh, wrote a Christmas card to Governor Justice, and he wrote back to me. And that is pretty awesome to receive (laughs) a Christmas card. It takes initiative. And I always feel that growing up with stories and fables, that's probably why giving me the motivation, reading stories to children, giving them the motivation and raising their self-esteem, it raised mine. And uh, I am going to agree with you, all the big people, all the names that are out there. One thing is I am not afraid to win. I know it sounds a little different, but uh, it's actually um, very, very strong. And I feel that a lot of people when they don't do anything, it's not like they're afraid to lose. They just worry when they win, then what? You know, I'm not afraid to win. And I am always the turtle, meaning the rabbit and the turtle story. That story I grew up with taught me a lot. The rabbits, usually they know they're strong, they're fast, and they're overconfident. That's okay. We'll start next year, three months from now, uh, to the voting. We'll put the yard sign. I'm the turtle. I start now. I started last year, October. And again, with all the money that I had, that little teeny weeny amount never stopped me from writing 500 Christmas card to the people of West Virginia to introduce myself. And I do not leverage on any, you know, kind of like family background. But I do have to say this. I am a proud wife of a Berkeley spring man. Good for you. Good. <laughs> And the turtle win at the end of the race because the turtle never stop. Councilman Corey Roman. Thank you, uh, Rashida, for joining us. Thank um, you, and sir. I, and I, um, I, I liked your response to uh, you. Bill's question because obviously, you know, that was that would be a, a hard question to answer. Um, one one question I want to ask is: you mentioned running a clean campaign. Yes. Um, can you um, point to a couple couple ideas that you have about running a a clean campaign as opposed to um, I would I would suppose you're you're saying your opposition runs thirty campaigns. Can, <laughs> I can hope you not. can you I make the they... can you make the, the difference for me though? Yes. Um for example, I am going to spend all my airtime, all my exposure in reaching out to my voters in explaining to them what my policies are, what good it will do. I grew up trying to to see all the best part of the world, meaning when you want to tell somebody what you're capable of doing by telling 
what somebody else is not capable of doing ain't going to get the message across. Like by telling bad things about others, not going to make you look good. However, if you do something and you prove yourself, you do not have to worry what others say about you because seeing is believing. Action is louder than word. And I'm a doer, and I walk my talk, and I have always tried to see where the areas that I'm going to approach, and I will focus on my goal. If you focus on other people's attacking your goal, you will not get anywhere. And that is why the turtle walk and not worry what others are saying. Hey, the hare or the, the rabbit is already halfway, and you're still struggling. He shut them off and he just kept going. So running a clean campaign, meaning I'm not going to focus on who sits in the White House. I know it's also going to be another challenging uh, election for the presidential next year and it coincides with the governor. So that is why people are going to focus on the presidential election next year. So I'm going to do all I can this year to ensure that I put a face and a body to the name that everybody is seeing. Therefore, we can actually have an impression because I met the woman. I spoke to her. She's not so bad. You know, she's got ideas. Ideas and she thinks, you know, she's going to do this and I don't see why not. So, meaning I will do all the time in the world like today. I'm going to tell everything that I have to say about me than, you know, telling what other people, you know, uh, uh, negativity. That doesn't Rashida, let, let's get, you going. get into some policy things and let's okay. find out where you stand on some issues. In West Virginia, we're currently debating a large tax cut. Mm -hmm. Depending on how large, it depends on what method of tax cutting you, you want to employ, the Senate's plan, the House's plan. Do you favor either plan or, for that matter, do you favor tax cuts, period, end of story? We Economic-wise, I never hear any any problem whereby we are desperately in need of funds, especially in West Virginia. And Governor Justice you know, has been doing quite good. I mean, everybody will not be pleased at anybody. There's always something that they will talk about. However, fortunately, we are not also faced with critical uh, area like Florida with the uh, natural disaster. And then also another country that's facing border uh, disaster uh, with all the immigrants coming. We are right here. We have natural resources. We have a lot to do. To do the tax cut, a lot of people have been giving me feedback that they would like all tax abolish. I understand on the left side and on the right side, meaning not the political uh, uh, issue, but the people's point, like our people, like people like you and me. We want all tax, you know, if possible, as little as possible. Now, when you sit on the other side, you're running the budget, you need to make sure that your bank book balance. And then if we cut this side, is it going to be able to, are we going to be able to pay West Virginia bill? So, of course, Jim has been trying his best to explain all his tax cut. I would say he has to do more himself because a lot of time if you send your representative explaining things, you might end up confuse the people. To date, I read all his uh, uh, write-up that, that they were going to pass. Honestly, I only understand 50%. There's a lot of attorney's terminology. Common people, like maybe my neighbor, like maybe the parents in, in that sen who sends their children to the school, they have no idea what's going on. There's not enough information in there. It's like a limbo. So with the tax cut, if the economy is able to pay the bill and also help our people lessen the burden, I would go for it. But unfortunately, I have to see the bigger picture and I have yet to read more of what it will do. Honestly, to date, whatever that was in the website that I read, it's only like about 50 to 60 percent. There's a lot of attorneys like hereby, say by, by like individual, you don't pay so much. And then if you're head of the household, married, you know, it's like too technical. He has to bring it down to the level and summarize it whereby is it benefiting. I'm going to say a lot of people are saying this tax cut are going to benefit more for people outside coming in, especially the single ones, the single individual. And that's not doing much for the families that we have currently here. So with the governor's proposal, and the House went along with it, was to cut personal income tax by 50%. Mm -hmm. So how would that affect 
uh, more positively people coming from the outside I, in. I it, thought, it should, should affect every resident in the state. Right, but I thought it's more to individual than as a family because if you see how they actually go about it, you have more benefit as a person, like if you are a student, if you are a single person without children, all that. Because if you're a family and you claim joint income, your income cap will raise. And then therefore you cut 50% down here, but then they're taking it somewhere else. So... As a family, you're not benefiting much, but for an individual, yes, you do. Well, where where in the governor's proposal for a 50% personal income tax does it say they're going to recapture taxes somewhere else? Uh, it's, it doesn't say that it was going to recapture your tax somewhere else, but the percentile actually decreased as you have it in a joint income. But if you're at an individual, because I read... Are you uh, talking about uh, the marriage penalty? He, no, I read the individual uh, tax cut that he actually put it out and then mm-hmm. uh, in that PDF format. So he says more, like if you're an individual and you're like making less than hundred thousand or forty thousand, you have like uh, half of the income tax tax right there. However, they're also trying to do the same thing for a family, for a marriage, uh, a couple. If you join income, then your income when you put in together, it will be higher, and then the rate of the cut will be lesser than what the fifty percent is. Like it, the way I read it, maybe mm-hmm. I'm wrong, but the way I read it, of course, it's benefiting individual, but it's not really doing a lot for family members, especially with kids. You mentioned your background is in education. How would you address the education issues in the state of West Virginia? Thank you. I love this question. Now, I understand that a lot of the policy that our uh, West Virginia government have they're more into infrastructure, they're more into economy, they're more into uh, bringing the energy saving costs, and obviously they're not forgetting you know, the coal mine too. Nobody's talking about the children and the family. And I think it is important that we start a very strong policy, which I have a few, to take care of the children who are growing up. They are our future. This is a cycle going on. Nobody want to start something or they said, don't fix it if it's not broken. But what they fail to understand is it might not break now, but it may break tomorrow. And whatever that we are going to face, especially now, they're going to be a surplus of all the children, all the babies coming in due to the recent policy. We have to be ready for these children and for these kids. Mental health issues for single mom, teen pregnancy, we have to be there. There are people who are actually helping. I don't mean to bring this up, but I read in one of the Facebook that somebody was saying something in a liquor store whereby a caseworker was there buying uh, liquor and she was stressed herself. So because she's helping people with mental health, she herself is going to get affected. I think people who are helping people need help and we should also give them as much. The way the policy is, like I said, many uh, suggestions, but it needs approval on the upper, upper part. And a lot of people are afraid to start it because they worry that the big job and the responsibilities are going to land on them and they don't have the time nor the capacity to do it. I have the time and capacity for the people in West Virginia. My policies, especially for the children, it is called the aspiration grant that I intend to put in when you talk about the tax cut and the economy. I want to raise the economy so we can give more to the people, such as if we have more uh, business, small business uh, opportunity, we encourage small business owner. I'm, for example, one of them mm-hmm. to open up more uh, businesses, more to be more entrepreneur. All these can go around town. The money spent can be kept here. Coming back to my goals and aspiration grant. Michelle is nine and she wants to be a ballerina. She loves ballet. But, you know, she lives with a mom and three other siblings and they're not able to afford it. Goals and aspiration grant is placed in every school in West Virginia whereby we have funds allocated so that someone like Michelle can actually sign up for ballet and the, the state can pay for it. Tommy wants to be a swimmer. Connor wants to learn karate. And then Susie wants to do singing or play violin. They have goals. 
I will not believe if anybody say my child don't have goals, all my child does is blah, blah, blah. They do. You have no idea. Children have goals, but their goals are not met because they don't work, they don't make a living, they cannot pay for their lessons, they cannot pay for their hobbies. The adults need to help. So with the adults' help, people like the state, you know, who are going to help these kids as early as six, seven, eight, nine years old, all the way until teenagers and young adults, if we help them achieve their goals, we're going to minimize drugs, we're going to minimize teen pregnancy, we're going to increase our our potentials. When is the last time we send somebody to the Olympic? I know it's too high. Oh, you're thinking too big. Yeah, if you have to think, you think big. What is That is why I'm running for governor and not house for delegate. Why do you think I run for governor? Wait for me for the presidential in 10 years. Great, Yoshida, we're just about out of time. How do people find out more about your campaign for governor? Where can they where can they find out more information about you? They can go to my website, Y-O-S-T number four, and the word governor.org. I put all my policies there, and I also put in these other, uh, very quickly, these uh, uh, student clock hours that I have uh, in, in one of my policies where parents can bring their kids or guardian to do a lot of interns as young as nine year, years old, sign up to be an intern in the, an attorney's office, in the doctor's clinic, in the restaurants, in the in the kitchen. So they are actually occupied. Children need to get out, get out, get out, not stay inside. Rashida, best of luck to you. Thank you, usefulgovernor.org. You matter, and I'm the people's choice. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, everybody.